Lord bless you, Brother Dale. Morning, friends. Morning, I'm always late. <laughs> um, Billy was telling me I had this morning, I uh, got around 30 private interviews. I've had two of them. <laughs> so I'll be two or three. So I just can't get to everybody. You know, people waiting and been waiting on the list for months and months. And the Lord's been doing some great things in there. Oh, He's, he's our God, isn't He? Amen. Now, I'm sure this morning that we're all uh, aware of the great sadness that's happened to this nation of the loss of uh, our president, Mr. Kennedy. Though I disagreed with the man in his politics and in his religion, but yet he doesn't deserve to die like that. No. And uh, leave those little children behind and no daddy and a mother that's Mrs. Kennedy, though I certainly wouldn't agree with her and her ways and things maybe, but Remember, she's a mother. She just lost her babies, and she lost her husband, and he fell right in her lap, and her own husband's blood poured out over her lap. That's awful. And did you ever think, sometimes we think she sets a pace for the nation and styles and things. That may be so, too. But did you know Miss Kennedy never did hear one of these messages I preach about that? If she might hear one of them messages, she might do different. And some of our sisters that hear it and still won't cope with it. She has raised a Catholic. That's all she knows. Nothing against that. See, she, That's a system. Nothing against the people. The Catholic uh, people. That's a system. The Catholic system. Just like Presbyterian, Methodist, or any of the rest of them. See? Or Pentecostal. <coughs> any of it. It's a system, not the people. Mr. Kennedy, I think, done a... A good job of being president. My heart goes out for his wife, and I feel real sad about it. And even our own nation would, the hoodlums and so forth in our nation would do a thing like that. If you can't disagree with a person, uh, right, and take your own stand, and no reason to kill another man just because of things like that, and them little children. <coughs> Uh, no, said one little fellow said, "Now nah, I don't have nobody to play with me no more. Daddy's gone." See, so uh, my... I've always thought that would be my state someday. It's almost happened several times, as you know. Been shot in foreign nations when they've had to hold their bodies over me, keep me being shot at a distance. So if a man dies like that, but that's the price it's paid. It goes with the glory of different things. See, I think we average about every fourth president, one out of four, is assassinated, and. Um, I feel uh, very bad about it. Shame that we'd have such a person in America that would do a thing like that. And now, yet as I said, I, I disagreed with his politics. I uh, don't didn't agree with his ideas of what he was trying to do. But you see, he's another man, and I didn't agree with his system of religion. I, I certainly didn't agree with that. But yet. He, he is raised that way. That's that's what it was. And I said maybe if he'd heard something different, it might have been different. We have a, a thing here we do that whenever one of our people dies or something, even though out, I think as a, as a American church, as a body of Americans, the American people voted Mr. Kennedy in for president, and uh, that was uh, that's the reason we're a democracy. I didn't vote for Mr. Kennedy. I voted for Mr. Nixon because I know Mr. Nixon personally. Amen. And uh, I, I liked him, and I, and I voted for him personally because I liked him. But the peoples of this country, uh, uh, Americans, my fellow citizens of this nation, elected Mr. Kennedy. And the way they did it, well, that's up between them and God, but that's that much. But I think for the sake of this mother, a human being, a mother of children, Mrs. Kennedy. Couldn't we just stand a moment for a prayer for her? Lord Jesus, we human beings, we have a feeling for one another. And we are sorry, Lord, that our president was shot down the way he was in cold blood murder. And 
We're so sorry that our nation has come to this spot that such people like that are, are in our nation that would kill a human being and cold-blooded murder like they shot that colored brother not long ago and just shot him right down in the cold blood of race prejudice. We're so sorry that such people exist among us, Lord. We, our weakness has brought this about. And we pray for Mrs. Kennedy, that uh, wife of this uh, president, and know them little babies looking upon their, their father that left them a few days before that happy man and scuffled and played with them on the floor. Now they have no father. And for that woman, that his wife, her own husband fell right in her lap and his blood ran out on her dress. Just bearing her baby and yet, Lord, we might believe the woman being in the wrong of the, the, the way that she has set a pace in the nation uh, of her dressing and so forth, but that that could be to the American people in whole. They, that's what they want. So we, we pray for her this morning that you'll help her. And may there be a time in this deep bereavement that she'll find what is truth, Jesus Christ. Amen. Grant it, Lord, the one who only can give peace and comfort in the hour of trouble. And help us, Lord, to continue to be with all of our hearts a shining light that we don't know what time or what influence we might be having upon somebody else. Let us shine forth the light of Christ until He comes. And then the great shepherd of the flock who knows all justice will bring every sin into recompense and He will know just how to do it. And till then we commit ourselves into Your hands for Your love and mercy upon us. In Jesus' name, Amen. Yes, I don't think no man deserves to die like that. No. Now, Mr. Lincoln didn't deserve to die like that. No. Mr. McKinley didn't deserve to die like that. Huey Long didn't deserve to die like that. Amen. None of them fellows. I don't believe in that. Murders. That's bad. Our boys didn't fight overseas for something like that. Amen. Our flag wasn't raised for something like that. Amen. We're not American citizens for something like that. Amen. No. Although our nation is warped and twisted with sin, that's what, that's what does these things. That's sin. Now, today we got... Uh, I'm going to teach Sunday school and a couple of things that I would like to make mention it to the church. And that is, the first thing, I'd like to you forgive me for holding you all so long on Sunday mornings when I have these messages. And then uh, if the Lord, well, the reason I do this is because that I, I'm here in among my people and I, I teach doctrines just as strong as I know how. I don't teach these doctrines out at other places. I just stand on the, the main fundamentals of the gospel, but these doctrines are strong. I, I don't teach them out in, in other places. And um, then here it takes me hours sometimes, two or three hours to get through them. My message, and I hold you here sometimes 12, 30, 1 o'clock. And that's just minor what I used to do. I'd stay all night nearly sometimes. I went, we started in many times at 8 o'clock and go home the next morning at 2 or 3. Hey, that's right, yeah. from the meetings. But uh, I, I'm going to try to want to come with you again. It just uh, a, little, a sermon instead of so much a teaching of this. Unless I notify you ahead of time that it will be something called... I got the seven trumpets, I believe, coming up, which ties right in on the sixth seal. When the sixth seal sounded, all seven trumpets went off at once, you see. And so we, uh, I'd like to get that to the church before uh, his coming, if, or my going, or whatever it might be, uh, if I can. Now, um, uh, if we do that, then we'll notify you ahead of time, and maybe then, as we see this morning, the halls jammed and the walls and around, um, we we'll try. We got a place now. We might be able to get up here. It seats about three thousand people. And it's a nice auditorium of a school right above us here. And the seven trumpets. We'll try to 
preach them up there at that school. And uh, that'll give plenty of seating room, you see, so we can get the people in. We want to report at the New York. We just had a wonderful time. Uh, the Mars Auditorium there, we just had to turn the people away each night. They jammed in the far. Uh, the man that owned the place. Far marshal would close the place down if we let them stand jammed in like that. And then we had to turn them out and people out on the street, walking them down the street, praying that somebody would get tired and get up and go out so they get in and get a seat. See, just one person. They just wait out there for the one person to get in. And one that's next to the door, and then they let one in like that. When somebody get up and go out, had to go home early, but they'd come in and share that much of it. See, they'd come. It's very fine. Fine bunch of people. And I believe the world, the Christian church is hungering for God. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm trusting that... Thank you, brother. I'm, I'm trusting that that uh, God will grant us this opportunity where we can come together and have those last seven trumpets. I like to be led to do those things so that you'll know. Then at the businessman's breakfast, usually their chapter there, I think he said, they had anywhere from 50 up to 100 at their breakfast, and that morning they sold 1,700 tickets and let the rest of the place in to pack the place out and every car and around the walls and up and down the steps and stand with people. And some uh, high ranking ministers, a couple of priests and, and so forth were there to hear the message. And um, so I understand it. I believe it helped a little. It might have done some, some more uh, better than what we would really think it would be. Now, and tonight, uh, the, uh, we're going to have a, the message tonight, the Lord willing, on, uh, on a subject of, uh, of how uh, uh, about your conditions with Christ. And now, that'll, it'll be short. We want to start, I want to be on the platform at 7.30. If, what time do you usually start? 7.30? We start 7.30, but oh. we'll start at 7. 7, and I'll be on platform by 7.30, and that ought to get me off by 8.30, if the Lord's willing, because I, I just, I'm just going to uh, be as quick as I can, and, and I'm going to start practicing. Then uh, another thing is... Uh, might be some strangers here. The people laugh because I try to get away from here, but I can't do it. <laughs> it's uh, kind of, I hope it don't sound sacrilegious, but my mother used to say, when people get together like that, it's just like uh, sorghum molasses on a cold morning. You know, it's thick and run slow. <laughs> so that's about the way it is. I run slow in these messages because the, the sweetness of the sugar cane of God, you know, kind of thickens us up together. And um, I, I, I don't would want it no other way. I want it just that way. Where I remember we used to stand and sing that song, Blessed be the tie that binds our hearts in Christian love. Our fellowship of kindred mind is like to that above. See, we asunder part, it gives us inward pain, but we shall still be joined in heart and hope to meet again. And um, I, I trust that that will always be our, our goal here. Many of those old saints has fell asleep since then, but we're still joined in heart. And I think that vision that morning of seeing over there in the blessed and glory of the young statues of man and womanhood still look like they did you know, here on earth. I think they're waiting our coming. Someday we will join them, God being willing. Now, um, I, I, and remember the services, the song services will begin at 7 o'clock tonight instead of 7.30. And then uh, next week, I'm at Shreveport, Louisiana. And uh, there at the Life Tabernacle at Shreveport, Louisiana, and I think they're trying to get the auditorium across the street. Brother Moore called last night and said that it's an annual convention, and um, they're expecting a great uh, host of people. I want to give a little testimony just for read the Scriptures uh, a lady was sitting here the other day that was to tell you what the, the influence is of somebody praying for another. I just happened to look down and see another lady. I just, uh, Margie um, Cox, uh, Brother Rodney Cox's wife, sitting here. And uh, last week, I believe it was, when we were here, uh, the Holy Spirit was giving discernment across the building. Do you know how people told? And uh, she was sitting, she's sitting right here now, but she's just beyond there somewhere. And I, I looked over, and there was a lady that uh, that was called it had the sugar diabetes, and um, Margie was. And in the vision, it was Margie, and uh, Margie was standing there. And yet, I looked down, I seen her, and it was a. I thought, now I looked to see this other woman, and Margie was in the vision, but the light was over the woman. 
So I, I watched, and I thought, well, if I call Margie, they'll say, sure. That's sure. Somebody knew him. Said, well, he, he, her husband is just one of his, his bosom friends. They uh, live together, sleep together, hunt together, and, and uh, everything. Sure, that's, he'd know that. But Margie didn't know that. But I called the other lady, which was a, I believe was a sister out of Chicago, as I learned later. But then come that in her the factory they're giving diabetic tests and and she had diabetes, and so she was on the road day before yesterday to the clinic for it, and, and so when she mentioned it, then I called her memory of this, and I said, "Come here, Sister Margie," and told her about how she'd been getting numb in her hands and and how the, the real bad feeling, the little lady works day and night almost up there, the loyal little mother to help her husband to pay for their home that they're trying to build, and, and her and her little sister Nellie and Charlie, that's the brother of Rodney, his wife, and all of them working together, them factories there just as hard as they can go and stand at a reproach. They let their hair grow out and taking makeup off. Things like that. When we become Christians, I believe in giving credit where credit is deserved. Amen. And I certainly have a warm place in my heart for those two young women. And then took her by the hand and prayed for her, and she went up. You couldn't find a trace of the diabetes nowhere. It's gone. So. A lady sat right in here somewhere that was called. There was a sister by the name of Bruce. I don't see her this morning, but she was always, she's a very much of a woman to pray. And this woman come in and uh, last time I was here, and there was no uh, no prayer cards given or nothing, so there wouldn't be nobody, no prayer line. So they just uh, the Holy Spirit just called over the audience. And this little Miss Bruce, she was was healed once herself with cancer, and she and she just always got a burden on her heart for somebody else, and she was just praying. And there was a lady from Louisville that was dying cancer in the throat, and while she was praying, the Holy Spirit goes right to that woman calls her and whatever it did, tell her who she was, told her other who she was and what her trouble was and about her having cancer and said she would, it would be all right. And the little lady went home a couple of days after that. She just started choking to death nearly. Just her throat swelled way up. She gave a big cough and the cancer jumped out. See, perfect. See, what happened, you see, the lump itself is a malignancy that's got a life in it. See? Cancer that comes from the, the word, the medical term of crab, which means got a lot of legs like the, the crab you get from the sea and it sucks your blood from you. And this malignant growth in her throat, had, uh, it was, that's what it was doing. Now, see, I'm not dealing with the growth. I'm dealing with the life that's in the growth. See? The life that's in the growth is what we're dealing with. See, in my name they shall cast out devils. Amen. The word devil is torment or like... Uh, of the body, and this was the devil. And then when the life went out of the growth, of course, that let the growth begin to swell, just like a little dog that's run over on the street, uh, something like that, let it lay there in the sun for a few days, and it, and it gets twice its size. Well, that's what was making the little woman get worse. Many times I've explained it, if you get worse, that's the very sign that you're healed, you see. And so it was just getting uh, worse all the time and choking her because it was swelling. And, but it had let loose the life without it, and her coughing, I catch you see, <laughs> like it sprung, pulled it loose from the rest of her flesh and the dead substance, just the body, with no life in it, the cancer gone, jumped out, see, fell out. So that's what the body went out then. That wasn't the devil went out. That was the house that he lived in. He went out because of woman's faith and what was told her, knowing that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and forever. That's what killed the cancer. Took the life out. Now she went, went back to the doctor and the doctor said, Nonsense. Uh, the, the thing is just there, same as it always was. But that was right. The growth was there, but not the life wasn't there. See? Now what if that had been somewhere where it could not have, have passed out? Is that That's a picture? That's a picture of the growth that passed from Mrs. Baker from over at Springville, Indiana. And she, this is an enlarged picture that she passed after prayer. Here's a picture of the growth from Mrs. Baker from Springfield, Indiana, that passed after prayer. That's a picture of it. See, that's the body that the devil lived in. Just like you live in, this body you live in. It might be little, big, red-headed, black-headed, whatever it is. See, the devil either lives in this body or Christ lives in that body. Well, then when the life goes out of it, your body's still here on earth. See? But the life isn't there. When the life went out, the body was still there. 
And then it tore loose from her body and was cast out. The body went out, but if it's in a place it can't pass out, then your heart has to pick up that dead substance and purify the blood. Each time it beats, it causes fever and everything else because yeah, yeah, it's an infection, you see. And your heart has to... I think the heart purifies the blood as it passes. Is that right, Sister Dow? I think that's right. The heart, as it beats, it purifies the nurse. You know, and another one sitting here in front of her uh, pure, uh, picks up the... And that's what causes fever from an infection. It picks up the infection and runs up a fever. Now, um, the people, see, it's your faith. It's never your feelings. Yeah, it's never whether it's so or my hand isn't straight. That doesn't have one thing to do with it. It's my faith that does that. See, yeah, right before us, we see the image of a perfect healed person by faith. And then we just make step by step to you step right into that person and just walk right on with it. See, yeah. there you are. That, that's what does it. Your faith, not your feelings, your faith doesn't. The yeah. thanks and praise be to God. Now, just a moment of prayer, and we've got a subject here that we want to give a consideration to in a little time that the Lord would deal with us according to this. And now, and then if somebody has to go this morning, he won't be in the evening service, the Lord willing, uh, I want to be here again. The family's coming back Christmas week. And now, uh, the Sunday after Christmas, the Lord willing, I want to preach my Christmas message here at the tabernacle Sunday after Christmas. Christmas. So, Lord willing, the text will be the tramp on the street. So, let us bow our heads now and offer prayer before we read the text. Lord Jesus, be thou near us just at this time. And we know that it's difficult in our small church and when many stand and, and we are here not because of the comfort of the place that gives us physically comfort because it is not comfortable. We're not here to be seen, uh, but we're here because that we feel your presence. And we know that you're here, and we're here for correction. And we're here knowing that we're in the house of God. And it, we feel good to be here, no matter how discomfortable it is, the standing and, and sitting crowded up. But we're here because that we, we feel that God is here. And the same way that boy must have felt that night, uh, when Paul preached all night long, what a long message from probably the going down of the sun until the rising of the sun the next morning. And a young fellow sitting way up high, he fell off and they thought he was gone. And Paul laid his body over him and the Spirit of God that was on the messenger brought back the Spirit of life into the boy's body. And he said, you'll be all right. And the young man lived. He was interested in what Paul was saying. God, we're interested this morning what the Holy Spirit might say to our hearts. Amen. And we pray that you'll break the bread of life to each one of us, that when we leave here today, that we'll not leave this building the same people we were when we come in. May the Christians be closer to you. May the sinners turn today. May the sick be healed. And may the kingdom of God come nigh unto us, or even to be in us. For we ask it in Jesus Christ's name as we wait on His Spirit to give us the words. Amen. Now, let's read some of the Scripture, which is God's words always right. And now, and uh, each one I see, you're very kind to the ones that are standing. I see somebody raise up and sit down and give somebody else a seat. That's very fine. I wish we had more room, but we just haven't got it at this time. Turn to Matthew 27. And uh, we'll read from the 11th verse. And then we'll uh, speak on this subject. And Jesus stood before the governor, and the governor asked him, saying, Art thou the king of the Jews? Jesus said unto him, Thou sayest. And when he was accused of the chief priests and the elders, he answered nothing. Then said Pilate unto him, Hearest thou not how many things they witness against thee? And he answered him to never a word, insomuch that the governor marveled greatly. Now at the feast, uh, the governor ought to release unto the people a prisoner whom they would. And they had then been a noble prisoner called Barabbas. Therefore... When they were gathered together, Pilate said unto them, 
Whom will ye that I release unto you, Barabbas, or Jesus, which is called Christ? For he knew that for envy they had delivered him. And he was set down on the judgment seat. His wife sent unto him, saying, Have nothing to do with this just man. For I have suffered many things this day in a dream because of him. But the chief priests and elders persuaded the multitude that they should ask for Barabbas and destroy Jesus. The governor answered and said unto them, Whether well, of these twain will ye that I release unto you? Just think of that. They said, Barabbas. Pilate said unto them, what shall I do then with Jesus, which is called Christ? What shall I do then with Jesus, which is called Christ? And they all say unto him, Let him be crucified. And the governor said, Well, evil has he done. But they cried out the more, saying, Let him be crucified. Then Pilate saw that he could prevail nothing, but that rather a tumult was made he took water and washed his hands before the multitude, saying, I'm innocent of the blood of this just person. See you to it. Then answered all the people and said, His blood be on us and on our children. Then released he Barabbas unto them. And when he had scourged Jesus, he delivered him to be crucified. What a sad picture. I'll call a text of this if you'd want to letter it that way or call it that, and maybe the tape would want to be titled this, What Shall I Do With Jesus Called Christ? And the subject I want to use, after that being the text, I want to use the subject with Jesus on your hands. With Jesus on your hands, what will you do? Our scene starts this morning in the judgment hall uh, where Pilate, the governor, had been called on the scene to, to act and, and make a judgment. Uh, it was uh, early in the morning, a uh, while before the uh, daylight, and he'd been disturbed out of his sleep and, and had been called out to hear the, uh, the case of this man. It was a time of the crucifixion of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, he, had, he had done nothing as they could find in him. And he had, he had answered everything. It was just the hour that it had to be that way. There's nothing that can happen without there's something behind it to cause it that way. There's got to be some reason for everything that takes place because it's, it's motivated, uh, of course, by the, the spirit that's in beings and in human beings and so forth. It, there's a motive, a motive of it and uh, an objective, and there's got to be a reason. And the reason this had to happen to this greatest man that ever lived on the earth or ever could live, the reason it happened this way, because it was time for it to happen. See? It must be thus, and there was no way to escape it. It, it had to be that time. And Jesus had come to the earth just exactly the way that God's Word had predicted He would come. He did just exactly what the Word said He would do. He lived the life just exactly, and God made known or manifested the seed of that time. Now, remember, God, the Bible begins in Genesis and goes to Revelation. Now, here's the lesson that I want you to understand. That, see, in each generation, it's been spoken in the Bible of a certain thing happening through each generation. Like Daniel saw, uh, interpreted the dream of Nebuchadnezzar, how the Gentile kingdoms would come in and how they would go down and how they would go out. And each one of those uh, people and them races and those nations, that Gentile powers that control as control of the world, has uh, done just exactly the way that uh, the vision said they would do. When Nebuchadnezzar, the head of gold, was taken, then the Medes of Persia came in. And the nature of them, according to the, the nature of the material, and according to what the prophet said, just exactly. 
Nebuchadnezzar, head of gold, which is the greatest and first of the kingdom. Then the Medes of Persia being silver, and then on down into the, the thighs of, of being um, a brass. And each metal gets harder and harder, gold being the softest, and it ends up in iron, which is the hardest of all uh, of the, that is iron. Now, each one of those kingdoms come down just exactly by nature, the way that the prophet said that they would do. And what was he doing? He was sowing a seed for the nations to watch. And each time that when that uh, kingdom was issued in, it had to do according to what that word said. And then Messiah was to come on the scene. And when Christ come on the scene, he had to answer those words of God that was to be fulfilled that the prophet spoke of that what he would do. Moses said he'll be a he'll be a prophet likened unto me. And if you have we had time to type that back and show just how that in that tremendous time when Israel was in captivity by Egypt, uh, how that Moses was born an odd peculiar child. And how that he, he come up and was raised up and how that he was hid in the bulrushes, and how that he become a leader, went into the mountains and got the law and came back down and was not only a leader, but he was a priest and a king and a governor, all those things, and how that just typed up Christ exactly. And Moses said, The Lord your God shall raise up a prophet like me. See? Now, when Christ was born, Israel was again in captivity by the Roman Empire. And what was he? Born a peculiar child and odd, how he was raised up. How he went up into the mountains and came down and said, You've heard him say them of old times, Thou shalt not steal. You heard him say, Thou shalt not commit adultery. But I say, Whosoever looketh upon a woman to lust after has committed adultery already. A lawgiver, see? And a king, a priest, a prophet, just exactly like him. So all these things had to be fulfilled. And when that space laying there for the life of the Messiah... When that was perfectly vindicated. Now, this may be the last long lesson I teach for a while. I want you to get it close now. When the word has been spoken for this certain generation, there's going to be somebody rise on the scene that will fulfill that word. Amen. Because God has spoken. It's a vindication of the spoken word. And Jesus met every qualification. And was the word vindicated as Messiah? Amen. Exactly. There's also words spoken in the Bible for the last day. Those words have to come to life. And we find here that when in the days of our Lord, the church had already rejected him before he come to Pilate's judgment hall. They had turned him down from the very day that his ministry started to prophesying and telling them a truth about the Word. Then they could not understand that how him being a man could know what was in the people's heart. Little did they know that the Word is God. And the Word, the Bible said, is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. And they wanted to call him an evil spirit. He said... Uh, I'll forgive you for that, but when the Holy Spirit comes to do the same thing, to speak a word against it will never be forgiven. And all these things that he prophesied to be in this day, something has to bring that to life. But when it's brought to life, it'll be so much different than people thinks it is till it'll, it'll only be the elected will see it. Amen. Always just the elected is the only thing that'll see it because it is elected and ordained to see it. Therefore, it cannot go the way. Jesus said, you can't come to me. No man can come except my Father draws him, and all that he has given me will come to me. Okay? So there was no way. He said, you got eyes and you can't see ears, you can't hear. He said, well, did Isaiah prophesy of you. See, Isaiah's prophecy springing up, being made manifest. Don't forget that. Here are a tape listener that God's Word must be manifested. God's obligated to see that it does it. 
Just as John the Baptist had foreordained the forerun, the coming of Christ, there had to be some man rise up to take that place. That word has to be fulfilled. Then when Jesus come as the anointed Messiah and done just exactly what the Word of God said He would do, and yet the Jews were looking for something else, a king coming with a rod of iron in his hand, which was way in the future. But He fulfilled every word. There one day in Capernaum, when He picked up the Scripture and read, did you notice? He just read part of that Scripture. And then He laid the book down and said, Today this is fulfilled. When He was to preach the year of Jubilee. Now why didn't He read the rest of it? Because it pertains to His other coming. They had no need of knowing that. That's for the age that when He will come in, but the age that He was in, that's where you can say, this Scripture is fulfilled today in your eyes. Right here you see it. To preach the acceptable uh, season and uh, bind up the broken heart and heal the sick. That's what He come for. The rest of it was just to bring judgment to the Gentiles and so forth. So that comes next. See, the Gentile had to reject Him first. Now at the crucifixion where we are today on the subject of Jesus on your hands, um, God's Word had been thoroughly uh, vindicated, been proven over and over that He was the answer to God's Word. Where that the scribes, you see, God has already got it laid out. Let the ministry study it. But you see, they take somebody else's word about it, some group of man. They're so blinded to the truth that when the truth is presented, they fail to see it. But you see, God is just, He's got it wrote out there. He's got it wrote out right here in the book. What's going to happen today? So it will be fulfilled, but others that's not ordained to see it will never see it. See, they, they got it all mixed up. And that's the way they had it then. They never noted it was Him. And by the signs, uh, He was the messenger of that time. Nobody could deny His prophet spoke of it. He said, I, I've got to decrease, but He will increase. I'm not worthy to unloose His shoes, but He's standing among you now, said John. And He will come. And the axe is laid to the root of the tree, and the trees that doesn't bring forth fruit will be taken out of the forest that, or out of the, the vineyard or the, or the orchard. It won't be there no more. Now, we find that those things happen just exactly the way that he said he could discern their thoughts in their heart. He was a prophet. Everything that he foretold just happened exactly the way he said, I go up to Jerusalem. There I be delivered into the hands of sinful man. And they so evilly mistreat him. And he'll be crucified. And on the third day, he'll rise up again. But said, see, you tell no man this. And he blinded it from them, but they didn't understand it until that was fulfilled. See, many times that he lets us become blind until the hour that we have need of it. He lets us become blind to the things that we see today. For this is the hour we have need of it to vindicate the day that we're in. Amen. Our fathers didn't know these things. The Bible said that they wouldn't know them. It hid them up. And in the last days it would be revealed to the sons of God. They'd be manifested. to be shown His glory and His praises upon the earth. And all that Daniel said about the last days and how that they that know their God will do exploits. And there's so many scriptures tying in this day that we're living in. And how that these evil, deceiving times would be on the earth. And just exactly what we're having now fulfills it. They, uh, they're, they've been given a chance to see Him, and, but uh, they rejected their very Messiah. And today it's the same thing. The very same thing. We are given the opportunity because God cannot judge without first having being justified for His judgment. Now, if you told a, a certain person going down the road of speeding, you'd stop and say, there's a, a hole in the road down there. If you continue that speed, you'll be killed. And they say, nonsense, I know what I'm doing. And you see, the blood can't be upon you because you have thoroughly warned them. Well, God does the same thing by His Word. He thoroughly warns the people of oncoming judgment and shows His signs and wonders that's predicted in the Bible for that age. He shows them and the people just walk right over. It's not easy for a person to go to hell. A man fights his way to hell. The first lie you ever told, you know it was wrong. first cigarette you ever smoked, you know it was wrong. The first evil you did, you know it was wrong. But in your conscience told you wrong, but you continue to run through the red light, run over the barricades. You're reckless. You want to do it anyhow. Show you're some big guy. See? But remember, you fight your way to hell. It's not easy to go to hell. 
You have to reject truth. Before you have the wreck, you have to run the red light. Before you have the wreck, you have to, uh, down there in the road, you have to, the warnings has been put up. But you, you got your own way about it, man has today. And he knows more than anybody else, and he won't listen to the, the signs and warnings of, of the oncoming judgment and those who reject Christ. Now, notice, and what they had accepted in the stead of this Christ. Now, think of the church of that day, the blindness of them. They had rejected a public murder, Barabbas, a man who had been proven to be a murderer and was really waiting his judgment. And he had been proven to, to be a, a murderer and was a bad man. And just because of, of the life of Jesus, which he, he challenged them, he said, which one of you can accuse me of sin? Sin is unbelief. If I do not the works of my Father, then believe me not. If I haven't told you the truth of the Scripture, and the Scripture has spoke for me itself. Amen. Search the Scriptures, he said, for in them you think you have eternal life. And they are the ones that testify of me in this age. Amen. But they said he makes himself God. He makes himself something. He made nothing. God made him God. Amen. He was God. He was a fulfilling of the Scripture. He never made himself anything. God made him what he was. And then, it's because it was the hour for that word to be fulfilled. So, but uh, they couldn't see it because it was against their denominational ideas, what they'd build up about the Christ. And it was too blinded from the word. Now, and besides that, to get rid of this fellow, they had to accept a murder, a public menace. To, uh, it was... An indebtedment to society, an indebtedment to them. A murderer had to accept that because to, to reject Christ. And before any man or woman can accept wrong, they have to reject right. Amen. There's something about nature, got a law to it, that you have to reject the right thing before you can receive the wrong thing. As I've just quoted, to, to keep from telling a lie, you, you told a lie against your better judgment. You told a lie against your conscience. You told a lie against what your mother or parents taught you to do. Or even nature itself teaches you shouldn't do it. So therefore, uh, you, to reject truth, you have to accept a, a, a lie and you have to reject truth before you can accept the lie. See? So that's the way these fellows have done. They had rejected the truth and he was the truth. I am the way, the truth, and the life. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And the Word was made flesh and manifested before us. In 1 Timothy 3.16, Without controversy, great is the mystery of God. Is for God was manifested in the flesh. Handled with our hands. God, Jehovah. It's, it's astounding. It's startling. To think that the God who put the, uh, the solar system into space that made stars that's a thousand times bigger than this world. And if one of those stars is start to the earth at 10,000 miles an hour, why it would take it a hundred million years to get here. It's so far away. And two of those stars setting look like an inch apart from here. They're further apart than we are from them. And yet there's not one of them but what holds his place. And that great galaxy. Oh my, the massness and the vastness of God who can make those things. Each one has to hold the other one. That's the reason it stays the way it is. If they got out of cater, the whole system would fall. That's what happened in Eden when Eve got out of cater. With the commandments of God, the whole race fell. Amen. That's what's the trouble today. We shouldn't be broke up in organizations and denominations and so forth. We should be sons and daughters of God, holding the great galaxy of the world together. New York, last week I was listening at a message uh, quoted, uh, said by Einstein, the great scientist, of the, what is called the brain of the, of the time. And I was... I uh, heard that, and then I went to hear Norman Vincent Peale on his 
uh, psychology about how uh, people should uh, do or walk and project themselves into psychology. Then uh, on Einstein, he was speaking of a galaxy that was out between the system there, out from stars. And if a person could travel at the speed, I believe he said, of light. Now, I think, what is that, 86,000? 186,000 miles per second. Uh, light travels. Now, break that down in five minutes, how many millions and billions of miles you'd be, and uh, 120 million years of lifetime it would take you to get to that galaxy. And then 120 or 150 million years, 150 millions over and 150 million back. And they hit something that stumped them. And they, after going out there and coming back, you'd actually take you three million years to make the trip. Three hundred million years. Three hundred million years to make the trip. And when you've come back to the earth, actually you've only been gone fifty years. You break into eternity. There's no end to it. And to think that the God who made all of that is set in order and spoke of it come down and was made flesh among us to redeem us. And would so honor us with his august presence that he, he would stand here on this sinful earth in the last days and prove his word to be so because he's obligated to that word. Amen. The sovereignty and the justice of that great one who holds those things in his hand. Notice the nations, the, the church has to turn his word down first. Then after the church turned it down and called him a Beelzebub or an evil spirit, then it was brought before the government so that the whole race had to be condemned. Now we find Jesus this morning uh, before a, a governor Pilate, a Roman, to be tried. And we find that the church turned him down first because that they didn't believe his message, because they didn't know the word. Amen. Jesus told them, if you would have, would have heard Moses, you would believe my word, because he's the one that spoke of me. Amen. There's a word that the prophet, which the, the Lord comes to the prophet, and the prophet spoke the word for the hour to come. And here it was identified. And said, you say you know Moses. And he is your guide. You don't know Moses. No, you don't know his word. In other words, he said, I am the word. I am the uh, identified word that Moses spoke would come. And you condemn me. For their traditions. See? The church condemned him. Now, we find him now before Pilate. And... Um, Thoroughly approved to uh, identify to the time or the church by the messenger of the time. They had been given a chance to see and believe, but rejected it. Why did they reject it? Many of them wanted to believe that. But their traditions, not the people, but their traditions. Now you see, like Nicodemus came by night. And he said, Master... We know that your teacher comes from God. We know that thou comest from God. No man can do these things that you do except God be with him. We, who is we he's talking of? The church. The Pharisees. The leaders of that day. We know, we're thoroughly convinced that you're that person. Why then couldn't they do it? Because their system. I want that to soak real deep, man. Because that's what I'm getting to. The system that they'd already joined themselves into was the one that they couldn't move, though they did see that that was Messiah. But the system that they was connected with would not let them accept it. Do you, you understand? Now, I want to ask from this visible audience, how many understands what I'm speaking of? Raise your hands. All right. Now, a system. They believed it, and they know it was. How I'd like to say that same thing today. Amen. We see what's supposed to be here today, Amen. and we see it, but the system won't let them accept it. Amen. 
They're so indoctrinated with the system. See, it isn't the person. It is the system. Just as I have spoke of the president that was just assassinated. Not the man. As far as I know, he's a good man. He never done anything evil as I know of. But it's a system. It isn't the people. It's a system. It wasn't the Jews. It was their system. That system condemned him because it didn't tolerate with their system. Do you understand? Amen. Now, the same thing takes place now. And they chose this uh, public uh, uh, enemy, a uh, murder. But the issue now has involved the government. So the government has to pronounce uh, this sentence because to take a life, it must come before the government. They wasn't allowed to do that because they were under the, the rulership of Rome. And they couldn't take a life, no matter how much their church said we got to do it. Well, they, they couldn't do it without first Rome giving them the sanction to it. So it has to be brought before the government. Now the government's involved in the thing. Now, if that isn't a picture of today, I don't see why. Just exactly. The church turns it down. Now it's the government involved. The time had come where the nation of all hold had to come. The issue was made. The showdown was at hand. The whole nation had rejected him and uh, bringing down the wrath of God upon them. And before the, even the church had rejected him, that bring the wrath upon the church. But now the nation has rejected him to bring the wrath upon all. And today, the world has rejected him to bring judgment to the entire world. Amen. All nations must be judged. And we know it. That happened in the time of the great Roman general Titus. He besieged Jerusalem. And then finally, just they eat one another's children, eat the bark off the tree and the grass off the ground. And, and then Titus rode right in and just tore down the walls and burnt the city. And the blood run down, down the streets like that where he murdered them in there. And it was, they had to, before a just God could let a people that he had chosen to uh, come under such a thing as that, there, there has to be a just reason. He's just. His, his laws demand uh, his justice. And a law without penalty is not law. If I'd say, made a law here in the city, uh, it's a, a, a fine to run a red light, and then there's no penalty to it, you just keep on running red lights. But there's got to be a penalty, and a penalty of God's law to reject his program is death. And there had to be a death, so it had to be paid. We stand in a similar trial this morning, the world over, a trial. All denominations has turned down the Word. Yeah, now, I know this sounds very harsh, and I want the ministers who's listening here present and those on tape also to try to understand this now, and I'll try to make it plain. But I'm holding my point or making my point here and saying that we are standing today in another Pilate's judgment hall. Amen. You say, if I'd have stood there, I'd have spoke out for Jesus Christ. And, well, what are you doing about it now? Amen. That's the thing, see? No matter how much the church had turned him down, I'd have stood by his side. You've got the opportunity. Amen. Amen. They, they turned him down. Now, he's tried today or just has been tried or in all trial for a world system to be formed of what's called the Council of Churches, the, the, the form in, in, the, in the World Council of Church. Now, and what have they done? They have voted that they will absolutely uh, unite themselves together and have a Council of Churches. And in this Council of Churches, that all churches must belong to this council. Or if they don't, you're not even allowed to preach. Amen. You're not even allowed to have a prayer for the sick. And your church can be used for anything they want to use it for. They want to store boxes in it or ammunition or whatever they want to do. You have no control of it at all. You either belong to council churches or you don't belong at all. And that's a system that's being formed here in the United States that fulfills the Scripture to the top. Amen. It fulfills what the Lord spoke to me in 1933. And we're standing at that time this morning, and Jesus Christ, the Word, is a trial today as it was on the crucifixion. Amen. And now He's on our hand. He's on the hands of the world. The Word's been clearly identified around the world. Amen. And He stands 
in, uh, uh, on trial. All the denominations turned him down. And now he's tried as a in the council of the churches. And they reject him again and choose rather, as they did then. See, the nature in history repeats itself because nature continues the same. Amen. Trees still continue to grow. And vegetables come up and flowers. And the world turns just as it always is. It's nature. And the nature of each age produces again and re reproduces the, uh, the reflection of what a, a, a nature was before then. And today we find ourselves again standing on that same place. Now, Jesus was the Word. St. John, the first chapter. We all believe that. He was the Word and because He was the Word. Please understand. He was the Word and He had to be against the system. And they did not, they did not reject Him because of his miracles. They did not, they said, uh, he said, which can accuse me? And uh, what uh, uh, evil had he done? Said the little lady. Uh, what evil has he done? But he was sick. Said, we don't condemn him for these things. See, we condemn him because him being a man makes himself God. And their own scripture said that he would be God. And Isaiah, the great prophet who wrote a, a 66 books of Isaiah and starts off with the, at the first like the beginning and in the middle of the book comes John the Baptist and ends up in the millennium reign. And 66 books in the Bible, like there's 66 chapters in Isaiah. It's more remarkable. It falls that way. This Isaiah 9 and 6, he said, Unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. And his name shall be called Counselor, Prince of Peace. Mighty God, the everlasting Father, wonderful. And the blind traditions or systems could not see that that was God by their own prophet, that who the Word came to that said that He would be God. But blind systems. So they had rejected the Word and desired a murder. Instead, Barabbas. And today, the word being clearly for this day has been vindicated. Amen. It's been made real. It's been shown to be the truth. And at the last days that Jesus said, as it was in the days of Sodom and so forth, so shall it be at the coming of the Son of Man. The very God himself, who was the word, predicted the end time and what would happen. And the lights would break forth in the evening time. And how the... Malachi 4, he would send forth these things and prove them, and it's been brought to the place of a decision. And the churches has turned it down. And what have the churches desired? A murder of the Word. One who takes a system. If the system is contrary to the Word, then it's a murder to the Word. And they've desired a denomination tradition and instead of the true word being manifested and proved that it's God Amen. amongst Amen. the people. By signs through pictures, light, the same angel of the Lord, the pillar of fire, the same one that lived on earth in the, in the body of Jesus Christ has come up on His people in the last days Amen. where science has took the picture of it. The church has seen its works. Amen. It's thoroughly identified by tapes and everything around and around the world. And personally ministered. And still in all of that, their systems are desiring a council of churches to condemn the truth. Amen. Desiring a murder that would shut off or stop or shut out. And it will do it. They'll stop such a thing. And the council of churches will have to do it. There's the mark of the beast. Antichrist against the word which is Christ. Amen. Amen. Not their, they think it's tradition. They think their traditions is of God. See? But it won't stand up with the word and neither does God vindicate it to be right. Amen. Jesus stood up with the word but not with their counsel but with the word and the word proved that he was God. And it proves today that it's God because it lives the same life. It does the same thing among us that it did back there. 
and predicted. So what do they do? They accept something that they have accepted already. The very system that will crucify that. And the crucifixion of free interdenominational is at hand. That's right. Now, that doesn't contrary the Scriptures. It's with the Scriptures. And they formed an image unto the beast. Uniting the world denominations in one Protestant, forming the mark of the beast, the image of the beast, according to Revelations 13, 8. And they made an image unto the beast. The beast is Rome. We all know that. But always it's been Rome. For all. How, can it be, how can it be Russia when the Bible says Rome? Amen. See? Amen. The people just get the wrong impression. See? How can it be some other thing when it's predicted it has to come out of Rome? Go back to Daniel again. The iron and clay in the feet. The iron never ceased from the knees down to the end. And anyone knows that Russia wasn't even known of them. Amen. It was Rome. The red dragon was Rome. It's always Rome. Amen. And that R never changed to something else from Rome to something else. It remained Rome. Amen. And the beast is Rome. Amen. And the Rome had a religious system whose deadly head, uh, uh, deadly wound killed him in his head, but he was revived again. From pagan Rome to papal Rome. And now they're to make an image to it out of the beast that comes up out of Revelation 13. Did you ever notice? This nation is numbered 13. Amen. It appears, I don't say it, this is it's, it's strange, though, that it would happen mathematically, just exactly in order with the Scripture. It's found in the 13th chapter of Revelation, this nation. All the other beasts come up out of water, which is thickness and multitudes of people, the Bible says. But this little beast come up out of the earth, where there was no people. Amen. Yet, he's a lamb, freedom of religion, then he spake like a dragon. And united himself with the power and done all that the dragon did before him. Amen. Exactly. Amen. So there you are. It's, it's just got to be that way. No other way of getting around it. And here we are today forming a system. A system. We, can't, we, also, we tried to make everybody become a, a Lutheran. We couldn't do it. We tried to make them all become a Baptist. We couldn't do it. All become a Methodist. They're all a Pentecostal. They couldn't do it. So to order to do this, the time is so short, they have formed a council. Yeah. A head, an image to the beast. Amen. It's exactly what they've done. What is it? The crucifixion of the Word again is a hand. It's on trial. And will soon come to the floor. Notice, the manifested Word from the denomination, it manifests the Word difference from the denomination. What is this? What is this system? It's a satellite to Rome. Did the Bible say it would be that? Yes, sir. Revelation 17. They saw Rome raise up itself in an ecclesiastical system of a woman. A woman. A, the church is always represented by a woman because the bride of Christ is a woman. Eve was the one fell. She's the one to be redeemed. And the church is what? It's a woman that's redeemed. And this woman set upon the beast with seven heads, and we know about the seven hills and so forth, as the Bible said it would be. There's no mistake. There's no chance for a mistake. Amen. See? And notice, then we find out that she was a mother of harlots. Amen. See? And mother and daughter unites together again in friendship where once the daughter ran away from the mother to try to live decent. For her mother was to so low down. An honor to the girl left home. <laughs> but now, since she's beginning to get a little age, she and doing so many evil things herself, she sees her mother, she thinks her mother was right, so she's forming a system Amen. of her own. Amen. Amen. Exactly. Amen. Uniting, denominational, Protestantism fulfills exactly what the scripture said of Revelation 17. All whose names were not written in the Lamb's Book of Life was belong to her, one or the other, either the beast or the image of the beast. Amen. The Bible said so. Amen. And Jesus spoke of this, not as communism, but in Matthew, the 24th chapter, beginning with the 21st to the 26th verse, he predicted that the spirit 
in this system would be so much like the real thing to it would deceive the very elected if it was possible. The elected whose names are put on the Lamb's Book of Life before the foundation of the world. And frankly, it got them so tied up until he said if you didn't cut the work short for their sake, there'd be no flesh saved upon the earth. And we've only got, this is, this is 64, isn't it? And I think they claim about 17 years is off of that. So according to the calendar, and we got 64, 19 and 64, which will make, what is that, 36 years left to the 21st century. And ever 2,000 years, the world has come to the end of its world system, religious system, to the end of all systems. God had to step in. He did in the days of Noah. First 2,000 years. The second 2,000 years, the system come back to where our text calls this morning. And he sent again his word. He sent his word by a prophet. Noah's time. Prophet Noah. And the people rejected it for their system. He sent his word again in the time of Jesus. The word manifested in the fullness. The people rejected it. And now it's 1964, leaving 36 years until the even 2,000 more years. And the word's been brought forth and the system has rejected it. Amen. How close are we? Maybe later than we think. See? At any time it could happen. Maybe it's already happened for all we know. As I spoke the last Sunday being here. The last name might have been on that book when it is. There's no more coming in. The world will move on just as it was, but the church is sealed. Notice now, as we go on uh, here, their names. Now, he will not deceive those whose names are written on. What is it? It's got to be a system. See? And it's saying, to belong to that denomination and that system, what do you do then? What have you done? You're sealed away, see, from the Word to a murderous system that takes away of having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof. It's the mark of the beast. Amen. Exactly. See, it's the beast over there, what he did, and here's the image, the same thing, and the beast was so great that formed that great universal church at Nicaea. See, that they made all the, all the world come to that, to that one system, and they thought it was so great nobody was able to make war with them, said the Bible, until they made an image unto the beast and brought all Protestants into the council of churches which formed a system that you were not even thought of as a Christian or anything else unless you belonged to that system. There's a difference between the mark of the beast and the sealing of God, God sealed by His Word. You believe the Word is? Amen. You say, is that right, Brother Bram? Yes, sir. Now, yeah, I know you Sabbatarians or Seventh-day Adventists say this, keeping the Sabbath day, but that, that is uh, not, not to be nasty with you, but that's absolutely unscriptural. Amen. Ephesians 4.30 says, Grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you are sealed until the day of your redemption. Okay? Now, the Holy Spirit is the Word. God is not three. He's the same God in three dispensations, three offices. God the Father over the law, God the Son in grace, and God the Holy Ghost, as you call it, the same God in the Holy Ghost disposition. God the Father was the Word, God the Son was the Word, and God the Holy Ghost is the Word. Amen. See? It's just three offices. And, to re and the Holy Ghost seals you, therefore you're sealed by the Word. Amen. Now you say, well, I'm sealed by... Well, then it identifies itself. Amen. See? It proves you can't belong to a system and be sealed with the system and the words because it's contrary one to the other. You can't do it. All right. Now we find out that the big machine mechanics, the mechanics of the big machine, that is to the machine, it's got uh, automobile, it's got pistons, valves, and carburetor and so forth. That's the that's mechanics. I'd like to say something to the church right here. It brings to my memory. See, that's what I believe we're so close to the end. I, I'm going to uh, say something now. See, the, Lord. See? The, Lord. The, the mechanics. There's so many people trying to explain the mechanics when you don't know it. Amen. See, the only thing you, sh and you, don't, you should know it, the mechanics is known. Now, what if Moses, what if somebody would said, uh, uh, Noah, I want you to explain the, the mechanics of how the ark flowed. 
how to, he couldn't do it. You don't have to know the mechanics, it's the dynamics of it. Amen. See? The dynamics is what you want to know. How if somebody come up to Israel and said, Say, uh, Moses, I want to understand how could you create animals with your own word? He says, In my word, it's God's word. He told me to do it. Amen. See? Uh, I, uh, explain to me how that you uh, made flies come up on the earth when there wasn't any, that many flies on the earth. See? Moses couldn't explain it himself. You don't have to, how'd you make the east wind come and blow a hole across the Red Sea and we all followed you on dry land? Explain the mechanics of that. What, what, what was the, the, the system that you used, Moses? What, uh, tell me the scientific research of what Adam you let loose. <laughs> See, he, he didn't know it. He, he, he didn't know the mechanics. He just knew the dynamics. And, and that's the way I can't tell you how I'm living. I can't tell you how you're living, but you're living. I can't tell how your heart and your food goes in and makes blood and takes a, the strength of that food and, and goes into that third wall of the intestinal tract and turns it back to a blood life and sends it back up through you. I, I can't explain that, but it doesn't. It doesn't. I, I can't explain it. I don't know the mechanics. It's the dynamics. Now, Moses might have known the mechanics, but it wasn't nobody else's place to understand it but Moses. Amen. They know it worked, and that satisfies why can't the people be satisfied that way today? See? Everybody couldn't be a Moses. There was just one Moses. They just knowed it was of God. They seen it was of God and they followed on. And done fine until they began to question it. Want to raise up somebody else to do the same thing. Korah. Dathan. And when they got somebody to bring some carnal impersonations in, finally God said, separate yourself. Don't get into that organizational system. See? Step out of it. I'm going to swallow it up. And he opened the earth and swallowed it. See? You don't know. You don't have to know the mechanics. Just know the dynamics. The thing that pulsates it, that makes it true. And see if it hits a target that the Bible promised it would hit in this day. See? It's the Word again. Back to the Word. Now, the big machine is sitting up now and ready to move. The mechanics is already there. They've already got the mechanical system of an organization that's going to bring upon the earth a peace, they say. they got a, like a UN. The nations are united together. It's a uniting time. I just preached on it recently. They're uniting together to bring what? A world peace. They did that in the League of Nations. They've always done it. And it never works. Amen. It can't work. Amen. The UN is nothing but a big rubber balloon Amen. that's carried about by every nation's wind of doctrine. it bust and blow up at anything. It can't work. Neither can the council of churches work. Amen. It's an organization by man contrary to the system, uh, with their system contrary to the Word of God. Amen. And it can't work. How can two walk together unless they be agreed? Amen. You can't do it. And how can the Christian church uh, will have to the, the Pentecostals, the assemblies of God, and uh, the great uh, other churches of the, of the Pentecostal kingdom, and of the full gospel people, how can they forfeit their evangelical teachings? The very principles that they've stood on and where they were raised up to come out of those organizations and condemn it. And they have to forfeit their evangelical doctrine to walk with men who disagree upon the principles of the Bible and divine healing and the power of God and Jesus Christ. How can two walk together except they be agreed? Amen. There you are. Amen. That's the hour that we have arrived Amen. at. And that's the big machine that's set up now, they've got the mechanics. The only thing they have to have is Satan in there with the dynamics to force the marking of the beast. When she's forced down, then the dynamics is working. The mechanics is there. They've already got them. Let me say something to you. This uniting time to see churches uniting, nations uniting, it's a uniting time of God and His bride, too. And I say this with reverence and respect. I believe that the bride of Christ is called I believe she's sealed in the kingdom of God. I believe the mechanics is there. They're waiting for the dynamics that will take her off the earth in the glory, in the rapture. I believe it. Yes, we don't know how he's going to do it, but he's going to do it. He is the dynamics. We just become members of the machine of his body, forming ourselves into his image and seeing him uniting himself with us in his works, with his love gifts as he hands them to us just before the wedding supper. And we're waiting, watching for that. Their big church is to be united. The dynamics of this church 
will be a refilling of the Holy Spirit. That we have worked in a small measure while the headstone is coming down to unite with the body. But when that head and body unites together, the full power of the Holy Ghost will raise her up just exactly like it. Even the dead is dead in Christ for hundreds of years ago. will rise in the beauty of His holiness and take a flight to the skies. The dynamics is the Holy Spirit. And now the dynamics of this great regime that they've got built, this big machine, will work someday in the United Council of the World Council of Churches, which will make a forcing to... But remember you say, when that happens, it's going to be too late then for you. You're already in it. Whether you want to be or not, you're already there. See? Notice, you've already got that Spirit up on you. In the day when the, wet, when the, the winds of the Spirit is blowing from east, north, west, and south, persuading people out of it and showing the people... That's the reason I've been so against that system. I've seen there was something out of darkness. As I seen them women, the way they wore that stuff on their face, I told you last Sunday, I knew there was something coming. Why was I always against that stuff? I didn't know it. I know it now. Why was I always against organized religion? It's because I see it now. It's a mark of the beast. I never said that until just the last couple of weeks. See? Now, after church politics, then what happens? After the word's been truly vindicated. Now, look, it's finally got to a place that's got to be a settlement. Their next move now was what was the Jews' next move? After the church turned it down. Church turned the word down. They wanted nothing to do with it. It was an evil spirit. It knew the thoughts that was in their heart. It was evil, yet it was the word. The works that he did testified of and vindicated who he was. They didn't want nothing to do with it. Then the next thing comes to a, a government. And this is a church government because the whole nation is involved. There was a heathen nation controlling over a religious nation. Now it's a, all thing is religion. Amen. So it has to come to a world religion. Amen. Oh, my blind man could see that. Amen. And what does a blind man say when he sees this? Uh, when he sees it, he'll come out of his blindness. Amen. Notice there when this world council comes together. What will we do with this Jesus called Christ? They certainly don't want nothing to do with it. So there's only one thing to do then. Exactly what they did then. They'll crucify it. Amen. Certainly shut it up. It can't be no more. They won't be allowed to do it. The force of the religion of the nations won't let them do it no more. Such ministry goes on here and things like that will be absolutely closed out. You can't do it without a sanction from the headquarters, the head of the church. See? An image unto the beast. Boy, we're here. That's all. We've, we've arrived. And truly vindicated. Next move is to crucify. Same as now. Causing all who don't join with them will be shut out and not be allowed to preach. You see? That crucifies afresh the vindicated word of promise. Amen. Stops it. You're not allowed to have it no more. No more healing services. No more prayer for the sick. No, sir, you can't do it. No one out of this other. No, sir. You'll come through the council of churches or you don't have it at all. Now you can see why I'm against denomination religion because it is the mark of the beast. Rome is ahead of it. The first one. That's exactly right. And it causes all to take it by joining the daughters, that is the image, the mother of it. Made the same thing. Where was Rome first organized? What was the first organized religion in the world? The Roman Catholic. Amen. Anybody got a word that says it isn't so? Just let me hear it. It's not here. The first organization, the first church was ever organized was at Nicaea, Rome. Yes, sir. And that's exactly what they did. And what did Luther do after his death? They did the same thing they done at Nicaea, Rome. What did they do after Wesley? What did they do after all the great moves that's come up? They did the same thing. Made daughters unto the harlot. Amen. Just exactly as perfect. Like by the same, we find out here, I had a little a scripture wrote down here. Maybe I better omit that. But, uh, and watch. They had it. the organizing of the church has got the same system together today. Only thing they need is the dynamics of it. Just something to set it in force. And it's coming to a showdown right away. Amen. The Catholic Church and the Protestant churches will become friends. I've told you that all over, ever so, for the last 30 something years. Right. They will unite together, and you see exactly what they're doing now. The, the Protestant will never become Catholic, but they will be associated brotherhood, a mark of the beast, likened to the beast. Like by the same means. 
that the mother Eve corrupted the whole world to a physical death. The mother Eve, listen, mother Eve cor corrupted the whole human race by physical death. How? By rejecting the Word Amen. and accepting something almost like it. She caused all physical death because she left the true Word and believed the true Word all but just a little bit. One little disagreement with the full Word of God caused every heartache, every death, and everything that's ever been on the earth. Eve done it. Amen. The mother of death. Amen. Amen. Now, you see where we're coming? The mother of death. Notice, she dis disbelieved the Word. She said, God has said. Satan said, that's right. God has said. That's right. God has said. That's right. God has said. Yes, that, that's it. In, in a way, that's right. But see, that, that, that isn't all of it. See, you, you have your eyes open, you'll be what God has said. Yeah. And that settles it. The Word. See, it started with just a little misconstruing of the Word. And the same thing, it's ended in the same way. Notice, a daughter is a product of a mother and father by union. Now, here's something shocking. But death, physical, physical death is the uniting of Mother Eve and Satan together by disbelieving God's Word. They united and brought in the, the product of death. She, the death is a product of uniting uh, Satan and Eve together. Eve had the Word. Satan's against the Word. And look, almost 99 and 99 hundredths of it, Satan admitted was right. So close, the Bible said in the last days would deceive the very elected if it was possible. See how it comes in? How it's always been? How it's going out? The same way. United of unbelief in all the full Word of God. You got it? That's what brought death is uniting unbelief with the Word. Unbelief, just a little bitty part of it, little bitty teeny bit. One hundredth of one percent. But it must be one hundred percent. That's all. Notice, God's daughter, the church, the bride, is also a product of God and His Word uniting. The Holy Spirit Uniting in a body of flesh. It produced the Son of God, a product of the righteousness of God. And in the last day, as we're told, as it was in the days of Sodom, the bride will be united by the Word of God made manifest in the flesh. The Holy Spirit sealing them into God and sealing unbelief out on the outside. As I said, if the life of Beethoven was in you, you'd live like Beethoven. If the life of Hitler was in you, you'd live like Hitler. And when the life of Christ is in you, you'll live like Christ. And the works of Christ you do. And that'll be, if Christ lived today, He'd do exactly what the Word said He'd do today. And the Word said that He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And I can't this blind ecclesiastical world see the time that they're living. See? Eve caused all physical death by trying to inject some heresy of Satan into the Word. And that's the same thing that happened to the church at Nicaea, Rome. By taking dogmas instead of the Word. Amen. That's the same thing in the Methodist, Baptist, Presbyterian, as the light springs forth in each age and they turn it down. That's the reason when Luther died, when Wesley rose up. It was another age the Word come forth and they had to accept it or die. That's the reason that the Pentecostals are dying now. Because the age is here. The Word has been made manifest. The eagle time. The time of the Word to return back to restore the faith of the fathers back to the children again. And they're so united they turn it down and they ain't nothing but spiritual death. And always, God's body 
united as his bride, being one, him and Christ together as a spirit working in the flesh of the church like it worked in the flesh of Jesus Christ. Because it's part of his body. Not twain, but one. They are one. A husband and wife no longer two, but one. And Christ in his body is one. And the same spirit was in Christ as in his bride, in his body, that unites them together with all the word. And God living in there himself manifested. And the Antichrist is to say, Oh, I believe in Christ. I believe in their gospel. I believe in these things. But you know, uh, there you are. But you know, the days of miracles. His pastor is no such as this. See, there you are. Oh, I don't believe you have to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. But the Bible said you did. Amen. Now I want some theologian to disagree with that. Amen. <laughs> Amen. See, it's got to be. You say, Well, the baptism don't make any difference. Well, then why was it written? Why did it make a difference to Paul? Hallelujah. Why did it make a difference to all the rest of them? Amen. You're either baptized. The Bible said you have a name that you live and you're dead. Amen. Because there's not another name given under heaven. Why would you preach in it, pray in it, everything else, but when you come to the pool, you reject it? Amen. Amen. I said to a man the other day, I said, what if a man, he said, don't make any difference. I said, if a man come to you and then said he was baptized in the name of the rose of Sharon Lily of Valley in the Morning Star. Would you say he's all right? He said, no, sir. I said, would you rebaptize him? Yes. I said, how would you baptize? He said, in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Ghost. I said, all right. Now, you did exactly, you place, if you call those names, you did the same thing he did when he said, Rose of Sharon, Lily Valley, Morning Star. Because that's a title, and Father, Son, and Holy Ghost is a title. Amen. He said, but Jesus said, baptize the name. I said, that's exactly what he meant to do. But what is not, not, he didn't say call these words. Baptize them in the name. Amen. Name. Amen. Oh, my. I said, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost is titles. The name of the Father, Son. Amen. The name of the yes. Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Right. Hmm? I said, what did Peter say it was? What did the rest of them say it was? Amen. What is it? Amen. The Amen. Lord Jesus Christ Amen. is the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Got about 30,000 natives. You have to rebaptize again now. Amen. All right, but that's right. Paul said of an angel from heaven. Paul told those people it wasn't baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, Acts 19, 5, that in order to receive the Holy Ghost, they had to come, though they were shouting and praising God and doing great things, he said they had to come back and be rebaptized again in the name of Jesus Christ after John the Baptist had baptized him. They had to come back and be rebaptized. And he said in Galatians 1, 8, if an angel from heaven teaches any other thing than I've taught you, let him be accursed. Amen. Yes, sir. So we have to stay right with that word, every word of it, see. Notice, oh, don't have no flaws. Be absolutely sure. If there's anything doubt in your mind, you better straighten it up now. Amen. <laughs> don't wait till then. It's too late. Don't wait till you take the marks of deep. You'll never see it anymore. You'll be blind. Amen. He blinded Israel that he might manifest his word. He's doing the same thing to the Gentiles because here they are walking right into it. It's the same as they did then. Uh, Notice, Eve rejected and forfeited her rights after she had seen the word vindicated by God. What he had done, she rejected it and forfeited her rights. The same thing he had done at Nicaea, Rome. And the same thing they're doing now at the Council of Churches. Just exactly, brother, there are some Genesis or Revelations, the same thing. That's what Israel done. That's what Pilate done. That's what the whole thing done. Always from Eve to now. Yeah. Same thing. They reject the vindicated word and take a dogma instead. That forms death, spiritual death. Dead. The word still preached to the dead. Exactly. Won't be through the millennium now. See, they're, they're already preached to. Maybe getting it right now. See, Cain's sons, which was a product of unbelief, of the word of God, Cain's sons scoffed at prophet Noah's message. You notice that? With God's word, he had brought the, the predicted judgment and had vivid signs, vindicated signs, that the time was at the end and Cain's sons scoffed at it. So as they do now. So they did in the day of Jesus. So they did all through the ages. It's always been. They scoff and make fun of it. He said in the last days there come scoffers. He said there's no difference in the time since their fathers fell asleep. You see? So did the sons of the devil through the religious system at the Word made manifest in the time of Jesus Christ. Look, religious systems of Jewish people, Sister Rose, Jewish people who should have known better, but their system 
cause them to reject and scoff at the word of God that they claim they believe made manifest. Yes. Not one word out of the way. They did the same thing. Same as they do today, the religious system in this big machine that they've got set up. Now, will absolutely has turned down the promises at the end time with the end time message and the end time sign, the end time everything that's supposed to be as God predicted it, word by word, it's on tape of if they shoot me down or whatever they might do, they'll never stop that message. It'll go on. It's the same, see? It's already out, it's taped. It's gone, see. They can never it's it's the word of the end right now. Thoroughly vindicated and proved over and over and over by signs, wonders, by mechanics, by 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 dynamics, by uh, by science, by the church, by God Himself has Amen. proved that it's Amen. an hour, both by the word and by signs and wonders. Praise God. A message approved of God among you by signs and wonders of the hour. A message of Jesus Christ is not dead, but a living is the same as the ever was, and sending forth. And it exactly fulfills Malachi 4 and all the other scriptures that Jesus said would be in the last days. It's totally fulfilled, both scientifically by the world. And the magazines packed big pictures of circles of light that was predicted here, and angels of God which has come down that they know nothing about, Amen. and all over, everywhere. It's proven world over. Amen. Next is crucifixion. Amen. And we're facing it. Jesus said then, What shall I say? Save me, Father, from this hour. But no. Oh, thy will be done. See, yeah, on earth as it is in heaven. Uh, yeah. That's what the church says today from its heart. Yeah, me join with something like, No, Lord. Yeah. Mm. No. Thy will be done. Amen. Amen. Right, Amen. As it is in heaven. Amen. Notice. Yeah. After promised word, for the age it was vindicated, they turned it down. They'd done the same day. And I'm coming down to close now. And as he came then, clearly identifying himself to be the Word, and he come to the showdown where they must choose the Word or take the system, it's come to the same thing today. Amen. Must choose the Word or take the system. And they have took the system. Right. Now, what does that do in closing? He's on the hands of the world. Right. Now my text. That's a long ways to build around. But now I just got started. Hey, man. Hey, man. Hallelujah. Don't get up. I was just teasing you. Look. Here's my text. We want, That's laying the backgrounds. We've got it all laying in one streak here now. Let's set it right down home and see what it looks like. Put it under the glass. Jesus is on the hands of the people. It's on the hands of the church. What will you do with this Jesus that's called the anointed word? The Christ means the anointed word. What will you do with this Jesus, Pilate said? What shall I do with it? What, what's my move? What can I do with this Jesus that's called Christ? What did the world call out? What did the church call out? Crucified. That's right. Stop it. Amen. We don't want it no more. But I ask you something. Can you imagine the guilt on Oswald's hands this morning? The one that murdered the president. Can you imagine what his judgment will be if he's proven to be the one that did it? Can you, could you imagine any mercy be left for him? The blood of the president of the United States is on his hands. Do you think the federal court, no matter how much he pleaded, I didn't mean to do it. That won't excuse him a bit. He'll perish. Why? Got the president's blood on his hands. Could you imagine his feelings? Would you want that on your hands? No, well, what about the blood of Jesus Christ? Amen. Amen. You think you'll be excused after it's thoroughly vindicated? How are you going to escape it? His blood's on your hands. Guilty. Sinner, where are you going from here? What are you going to do after the meeting this morning? You think you say, well, I intended, 
I didn't mean to be bad. Oswald might say the same thing. If the justice of our Supreme Court will call for justice, it'll call. It's, it's, our, it's the absolute of the nation. The whole nation's tied to that Supreme Court. And there can be nothing left. He's committed the crime. He has to pay for it. No matter how much he didn't mean how his intentions was or nothing about it, he's going to pay for it anyhow. If our Supreme Court and its justice demands a recompense of reward, how much more will you find yourself at the judgment bar of God when you come with the blood of Jesus Christ on your hands? What will I do with this Jesus call, the anointed word? You've heard it. You know it's the truth. It's thoroughly vindicated. A murder. Would you desire denominational murder of the word? Then the innocent Christ. Would you crucify? Would you, would you dare to take Barabbas? Could you call for Barabbas? How dare anyone to do that? To call for Barabbas, the murder of the word. Then to take the word itself, which is life. And it's on your hands. When I heard of the murder of President Kennedy, this message fell on my heart. I thought, what will that man do? No way out of it. Now, he might have woke up by this time and realized what lays ahead. You're going to wake sometime here on the tape, wherever you're at. You're going to wake sometime, sinner, and realize that there's a blood on your hand and the blood of the Son of God and you're guilty of murdering him. Your sin murdering him. Your unbelief in his word. You're failing to see his identification. Grieve the way of the Holy Spirit. And what can you do but stand at the judgment of God knowing what's going to happen to you? Yes. The blood of John Kennedy on the hands of Oswald will be a minor thing than the blood of Jesus Christ on your hands when you stand before God. Amen. What will I do with this Jesus called Christ, Pilate said. He had been placed on his hands. And the blood of Jesus Christ is placed again on the hands of this congregation. Amen. It's placed on the hands of this nation and around this world where these tapes has been and the things has been vindicated and proved of God. Now, what will we do with this Jesus that's called the same yesterday, today, and forever? What will we do with this Jesus? Are you ready to take your place at his side? Amen. Pilate, and the same thing Pilate did, there remains three things you can do with him. Pilate tried all three, and he missed it. Three schemes that you might try to work. But it'll never work. Pilate tried to get him off of his hands. But when once placed on your hands, it's on your hands. Pilate tried three different ways and failed. We must face the facts that he's on our hands. We've seen him in his word. We see him vindicate himself. We know that he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Is that right? Then... I'm not only talking to this congregation here this morning because I'm only talking to a, a, a six, seven hundred people maybe. But I'm talking to millions in this tape that will go around the world. Huh? He's on your hands in tape land, wherever you are. You know it's the truth. If you don't, then you're blind. You can't see the Word, neither can you see God in the Word. Amen. And He's on your hands. Now, what are you going to do with Him? Pilate tried to get rid of Him. But we have to face the facts Pilate had to face it. He knew he had heard. Well, you say, I never did see any of you. have heard it anyhow. You're hearing it now. He wanted Jesus to do a miracle or a trick for him, but he wasn't playing tricks. He was only doing as God told him to do. You've heard. Faith cometh by hearing. You have faith and get away from it. You get this off your hands. But he had to face the facts anyhow. He did, and so do we. have to face the facts. He's fully identified. Think! With the blood of a man on your hands. Man has to watch when he's got another man's blood on his hands. 
Look at an airplane, a pilot out of a plane. When he runs that plane out, he checks every instrument. Why? He's got the blood of somebody on his hand. Every little instrument that can be checked, he checks it. When he gets out and turns the plane around, he, he, he uh, rigs up the, the, the motor, the engine, and see that it's warmed up. And throw the throttle all the way on it to see it, the blast will, well, if it'll be able to, to, to compare, throw the propeller to, with enough air to take it off the ground. You've stood many of you in a plane or sat down there and the whole plane shake off the ground nearly. He's given it all it's got. To see if there's anything out of line. If it will, it'll spit and conk out. But he checks it again. If he has to sit there a moment or two, he checks it again. If they hold his time a little, he checks it again. How the church ought to be checking it again and again and again and again. Amen. We're waiting for his coming. We're waiting for waiting for the takeoff. Amen. Amen. We better check it with the word. Amen. Not what somebody said. Be sure you know yourself. As a personal experience with Christ. Amen. Check it again and again and again. Why? He's got the blood. A man up on his hands. He better check. How about a doctor before an operation? We got a couple of doctors sitting here this morning. Notice that a doctor, what he'll do before he goes to surgery, he wants to x-ray. He wants to check the blood. He wants to check the heart. He wants to see if you got any cold before he gives the anesthetic. He checks every instrument. He borrows them thoroughly. See, there's no germs on it. He does everything. He checks over and over and over and over again. Why? He's got the blood of a man on his hand. He wants to be dead sure that everything's just as right as it can be right. What about you? What about you, sinner? What do you feel about it? To have the blood of a man on your hand responsibility like a pilot and he checks a doctor and he checks and what else more so many scientific uh, when you got the blood of a man on your hands what you'll do when a judge is going to pronounce sentence look how he reads those books over and over and over and over and over to every little thing that he can see before he pronounces sentence because he's got the blood of a man on his hands there must be something here to justify that how about us when we see it thoroughly identified that he's the same yesterday and forever He's here. He's on her hands. Amen. He's on her hands. He's on your hands. What are you going to do with him? What will I do with this Jesus that's the anointed Christ? What does it do? I know it's him. The promise of this day, the day that we're living in, there's so much of the Scripture saying so many inches of it is supposed to be fulfilled these last inches of this last day. There's some things set here supposed to happen, and here it is. What is it? The same anointed Christ. The anointed Word. What are you going to do with it? Are you going to sell it off to the denomination? Now, what did Pilate do? Pilate tried to wash him off of his hands by saying, the first thing Pilate did was try to wash him off of his hands by saying, oh, he's okay. He's all right. See? You say, oh, poor Pilate. Pilate, a lot of them justify him. No, no. No, he was on his hands. He had heard the message. He'd seen the word. And he's on his hands, and so is he on your hands. Right. Amen. What did he do? He tried to say, "Oh well, he's a good man. I find no fault in him." If that ain't the uh, the, <laughs> the answer of so many today, oh, there's nothing wrong with the word. I guess it's okay. The Bible's all right, but we believe the church. Our denomination don't agree with it. See, see, there's one class of people. Trying to wash him off his hands. I find no fault in the Word. It was okay for the apostles in their day. But we live in another day. We don't live in the apostles' day. So therefore, I don't have to do like the apostles did. I don't have to be baptized the way they were. I live in another day. I don't have to have the things that they had. I live in another day. The Holy Ghost is just given for that a bunch. Hebrews 13, 8 puts it back on your hands again. No escape. He's sternly vindicated. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. There you are. 
You have no escape. You can't pass him off to some other age. Amen. Hebrews 13, 8 condemns your thoughts and puts him right back on your hands again. Amen. So Jesus is on your hands, just like on Pilate's was. Look, you say, but I don't know. Well, why are you listening for? Amen. Amen. Pilate was a pagan. His wife was a pagan. But God, to make it just, sent that woman in there and said, don't you have nothing to do with this just man? She said, I suffered this day. Of course, the morning is over the night. 124 hours is considered the day. I suffered some dreams tonight of that just man. Don't you have nothing to do with it? Now he said, well, then if that be so, I'll just wash him off my hands. But he couldn't do it. Amen. Neither can you. Amen. Once you hear the truth, you've got to accept it or deny it. Amen. Knowing. Amen. Yes, sir. You have to do it. Warnings of the Lord. The Jews... Screamed out, let his blood be upon us. For we would believe our priest, our denominational system, before we'd believe him. Are you all see the classes today? But all must face God's issue. <laughs> You've all got to do it anyhow. Pagan or whatever you might be. Unbeliever, Methodist, Baptist, Presbyterian, lukewarm, cold, hot, whatever you might be. You've got to face the issue just the same. Whether you want to or not, it's on your hands. It's exactly. Then there are those who try Pilate's other scheme to dodge the issue. Pass him on to some other Caesar. Yeah. See, Pilate said, now, wait a minute. I, I, I don't want nothing to do with it. I, 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 he's a just man. I, I don't want nothing to do with him. Oh, I, I believe what I've heard. I've never seen him do a miracle, but there's too many witnesses for him. I, I, I believe he's a just man. He's a good man. See? But, uh, but I, I don't want nothing to do with him myself. That's right. That's right. I, 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 just, I just wash him off of my hands. Bring me some water. You all bear me a record here. Yeah, but God was bearing a record too. Amen. He was on his hands, and so is he on your hands. See? You know, you know what I'm talking about. Amen. Not only you, but this tape. He's on your hands. Amen. What are you going to do with him? This Amen. Jesus called Christ. Christ is the anointed word. Amen. What are you going to do with it? It's the message of the hour. The day is here. Thoroughly proved by the Bible and by God. What are you going to do with it? How are you going to dodge the issue now? How are you going to get by with it? He's on your hands. Oswald's case will be a minor one for yours. No minister, whoever you may be. Them Jews are priests and rabbis, teachers, holy men. But he's on the hands. It's the same. He was the word, the issue of God for that day, and they failed to see it. Just the elected saw it. The ones that believed it. Now, all must face the issue. And every age has been so every time. Through the age of Eve and Adam, on down to the age of Noah, on down to the time of Daniel and Belteshazzar and Nebuchadnezzar, on down into Christ's time, on down into this very hour we're living. It's been the same. The issue of the words come forth. Not the creed or not the denomination, not the dogma, but the issue of the word has been against those things. Amen. That's all now. It's on the hands now. And those who try Pilate's other scheme to rid him, but pass him off to somebody else. Pilate said, now, you know what? I'll just get him off my hand. I'll wash him off my hands with this water. So I'll just, I've got to do something with him. So what will I do? I'll send him over to the headquarters with the bishop. <laughs> That's what they try to do today. See, They sent him to a Caesar. That didn't take him off Pilate's hands. Take him off of nobody's hands. What did it do? It backfired on him. Comes right back to the individual. You say, well, I would, I would do it. I would accept it and my denomination would accept it. Your denominations in the council of churches condemned. How are they going to receive it? It backfires right back to you. Amen. It ain't what your denomination says. It's what do you say. Amen. They've rejected it. Now, what are you going to do with it? That's the next thing. See, that don't take him off your hands. He's thoroughly vindicated. He's thoroughly identified the word of this hour, the promise of this hour. Not the promise of Luther's hour. That was it then. That is a word in the Reformer's age. As you all who's here to seven seal, when the reformers' age went out, the beast with a face like a man, organization issued. 
But this is the face of the eagle, the beast that went to meet the challenge of the day. And who would dare to say that wasn't the inspired word of God when he foretold it here and sent out here to Arizona and brought it right back even with science and everything else? Amen. So, the book's already open. <laughs> That's right. Just waiting for the seventh seal to be identified to the coming of Christ. All right. He's on your hands. You've got to do something with him. Don't take him off. Yes, sir. In this category, I'd like to say, pass him on to somebody else. If my denomination would accept it, Brother Branham, I'd, I'd accept it. But see, my mother belonged to this church. She lived in her age. That ain't you. It's you now. Look what she had to come out of to be what she was. What about you? All right. Look, you say, my mother was a Pentecostal. She did so and so. She came out of the organization. But I'm trying to talk to you now. What about you? In this category, we find many educated. Now, I know I'm going to hurt feelings here, but I don't do it intentionally. If I do, then I, I should be down to the altar repenting. I'm saying this in godly love. Amen. Jesus, when he stood there and them Pharisees had to say, you're your father, the devil, his works you'll do, yet call for peace and mercy for him at the cross. Yeah. They crucified him. See, he wasn't angry with them. He said, you generation of snakes. See? see? Everything he cursed them to everything he could. See? And then prayed for him at the cross. It wasn't he wanted to do that. It wasn't that. But they had to see the mistake they were making. And I'm saying the same thing today. In this category of passing the buck on to somebody else or something, we call it in the army, passing the dollar on to somebody else. We are trying to pass it on like Adam and Eve did. Eve tried. Adam said, the woman you give me. And that was no excuse for him. See? The woman said, the serpent beguiled me. She, he was one who had the sexual affair with me. He beguiled me. He did this. That didn't keep it away at all. They went right on to the judgment just the same. Yes, sir. All right. You can't pass it one day. You can't say, if my denomination would believe this, I, I do too. But I've been in this denomination. I've got one thing to do with it. The Jews had the same thing. So do you. And no many in this we find fine cultured man in this category. Now listen close. See, culture, what we call culture today, is what Satan produced to Eve, a little wisdom. Said your eyes are not open, that you don't understand all of it. She knowed the word, and that was all. She seen God vindicating that word, and that word been fine. He was keeping her in eternal life as long as she stayed with that word. When she broke that word, she had uh, the promise of God that she would die the day that she broke it, and when she broke it, she died. That's right. That's right. We got the vindicated word of God here, vindicating, proven by the Spirit that He's received us and give us the baptism of the Holy Ghost. We're baptized into the name of Jesus Christ. The same gospel, the same signs, the same wonders, the same ministry, even the same pillar of fire visible before us, showing the signs and wonders. There's not an excuse nowhere, and that's exactly what the Bible said to take place in the last days. And a call from Malachi 4 to restore the faith of the children back to their fathers again. Amen. And right after that, the wicked walked, or the righteous walked out upon the ashes of the wicked. The whole world was to be burned. And the atoms are hanging over under the bombs in the rack. You see what Germany done as soon as they found out the, pre uh, the president was assassinated? They throw their army together real quick because that's the only thing that's holding Russia from bombing there. And they can't uh, just send them more. The, the hour they do that, they'd sweep them off the earth right out of Germany. <laughs> see, and they thought they could take it over, but it wasn't an hour yet, see. We find smart, educated preachers, evangelists, trying to pass it on to somebody else. Yeah, yeah. See? Why? Why didn't Pilate say, well, wait a minute. This man, this wife's come and told me, and I've heard many testimonies of thee. You know, I, I'm interested. I'd like to find out, what can I do to have eternal life, sir? You're on my hands. What can I do? Well, he'd say, he'd say, uh, he said, are, are you the Messiah? Are, are you the, the king of the Jews? Said, That's what you said. You said it. Or tell us truly, are you the king of Jesus? He said, to that end, I was born. He said, I can't find no fault in him. <laughs> well, this washed him off my hands. He answered him. But he couldn't receive it. Why? It would lower his prestige. So he thought he'd send up to the state presbyter and see what he did about it. Hmm? The same thing now, the issue comes forth again. What will you do with it? The word. What do you have to do? Ask the presbyter or the bishop or somebody if you can change your motive of baptism. If you can get to do this or do this, you see so on. Well, certainly you're not. You pass right back to you. If you do, you'd be kicked out. See? It would lower the prestige of the people. Yes, they, they think. And the denominational council wouldn't stand like Like Pilate passed it to Caesar. They wouldn't stand for it. Caesar put it back in Pilate's hand. So they tried to pass him on to their... Uh, to their denominational heads and it don't work. This trick has never worked and it won't work. It didn't work for Pilate. It won't work for you. It won't work for nobody else. Now, secondly, the thing you can do um, is, uh, thirdly, right, is to accept him or reject him. 
You can't wash him off your hands. You can't pass him on to some other system or some other something else. You've got to face the issue. So what can you do? Like Pilate stood with the same thing. He said, give me some water. I'll wash your hands. It proved when he returned back, he still had to pass the judgment. <laughs> Didn't excuse him. He tried to say, well, if I can't get him off my hands, I'll put him on Caesar's hands and it backfired right back to him. Yeah. It does to you too as an individual. What are you going to do? Not what Mother did, what Papa did, what the pastor does, what Brother Brandon does, what it's on your hands. Amen. What are you going to do about it? Amen. With this Jesus called Christ. Because you got blood on your hands. Amen. And it's the blood of God. Now what are you going to do? Be guilty of the crucifixion. See? You can crucify him, accept your creed or whatever you want to, or say, well, I'll just pass on all. I won't have to undo none of this church stuff. You can't do that. He's on your hands. Amen. That's right. Amen. You can't do it. I'll just forget the whole thing. You can't do it. Amen. still on your hands. Well, I'll just say, my pastor taught me this. It backfires right back. It's to you. Amen. You know. Amen. Now, you can either receive him or you can reject him. Just either way you want to do it. But it has to come to one of them. Now, as Jesus said to these Pharisees, he said, as you're the blind Pharisee, see, uh, who had said the same thing today, you blind religious teachers... You can discern the time of communism. You're so fighting that and know that God raised the very thing up to destroy you. <laughs> Not knowing the scriptures, see. You, you can discern that communism is going to take the world. You can see that. You can discern that. All of our subjects is on communism. Beat communism out. I hear it till I get sick of listening to it. I'm against it too. Certainly I'm against it. But I'm more against the man or the woman that rejects Jesus Christ, the Word. Or really, you'd be a preacher or whatever you are. You're a more indebted to the Christ than that communist is. He's ignorant and knows nothing about it. You're supposed to know. See? You can discern the time of communism, but you can't discern the sign of the day you're living in. Jesus told them Pharisees, he said, you hypocrites. He said, you go out and look at the skies and say, the sun is red and lower and tomorrow be foul. If it's cloud clear, he said, you say, tomorrow be a clear day. He said, you can discern the signs of the time or the signs of the skies and the weather, but the signs of the time you don't know. There he was, the Messiah, and rejecting it. And we always talk about communism and some of this stuff, but the sign of the time, we don't get it. See, we overlook that, omit that. Uniting together right now in unbelief, and they receive it but fail to understand and see the sign of the time that the Bible said would be. Have you got it? Amen. I have to close real quick now. It's getting late. See? As their fathers did, so do they. Same thing today. Now, the decision has been reached. It's got to be reached. You've got to reach it some way. See? Crucifixion of the Word again, or what are you going to do? Crucifixion of the Word is at hand. Crucify and stop uh, the vindicated word for, for the denominational sake like Pilate did trying to pass off somebody. Now, what will you as an individual do with the anointed word which is called the Christ? The same yesterday, the same Christ that anointed the word in the days of Noah, the same Christ that, uh, that tree that was in the Garden of Eden that Eve left eating off of this tree of life to take the tree of wisdom. He, she left the tree of life to take the tree of death. Noah's time did the same thing. In the days of the prophets, they did the same thing. In the days of Christ, they did the same thing. And here they are today for each one speaking of his time. And when that thing was fulfilled, each time they took their denominational reasons and so forth and the wisdom of the world instead of the anointed word of Christ. Yeah. What will you do as an individual? Pilate never got him off of his hands. I'm, I'm closing, so be real quiet just a moment. Pilate never got him off of his hands. Neither will you. In the way that he did, trying any of these schemes, he never did it. You know what happened to Pilate? He lost his mind. He got so all he could hear was that crucifixion. All he could hear was a rage that he finally went insane. And they got a legend way up in Norway, or not, I beg your pardon, up in Switzerland, where I've been up there, a missionary. They claimed thousands gathered there from world over on Good Friday. A hole of water where Pilate committed suicide. He finally dashed himself to death in this pool of water. And they claimed that every Good Friday at 3 o'clock in the afternoon, the water turns blue. It boils up from where Pilate's body laid. He rejected it. 
Oh. There's still blood on his hands. He reject, he refused the water. You can't wash him off your hands. There's no water, no fuller soap that can cleanse it. He's on your hands. What will you do with him? Here's the only thing that you can do. If you cannot wash him off your hands, you can't pass him on to something else, you can't just mythically pass it by. There's no way in the world. The only thing you can do is accept it in your heart. That's the way to get rid of him. Take him off your hands and put him in your heart. Or leave him on your hands and stand the judgment. That's the only thing that you can do. Pilate's in was a terrible one. The Word says that these who will keep him on their hands, I was going to read it, but said they cried to the rocks and the mountains. They prayed, but their prayers were too late. They cried, hide us from the face of him that sits upon the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb that is the, the, ram, the life of the Lamb that's come. For the great day of judgment has happened, and who shall be able to stand? What do you think Oswald's going to do now when he walks out before the Supreme Court and seals angry eyes of that, that jury and all sitting there? He knows what's going to happen. It'll be either a gas chamber or a rope hanging there or something. He's got to face it. But what if you walk out there with the blood on your hand of rejecting and know that hell lays before you? Eternal destructions. Crying for the rocks and the mountains, but prayed for the prayers were too late. In Hebrews 10, if we sin willfully, sin is unbelief. If we unbelieve willfully after we have received the truth, the knowledge of the truth, you don't have to receive it, just know about it. You don't have to have it. You just, oh, no, no. See, it didn't say if we receive the truth. If we sin willfully after we receive the knowledge that it is the truth. There remaineth no more sacrifice for sins. But a fearful looking for the fiery indignation shall devour the adversary because God said, Vengeance is mine. Now I will reckon be, say that, saith the Lord. If we disbelieve it willfully, after the truth has been presented to us, there will be no more mercy. No more mercy will be granted. Pastor, listen to this tape. What about it? Member of the church, listen to this tape, what about it? What are you going to do if we disbelieve it willfully? Can't wash it off your hands. You can't pass it on to the headquarters. It's going to backfire right back to you. You've heard it. What about you? How are you going to stand in that day? He is either on your hands or in your heart. One or the other. God is... Help us. If, if you can just imagine an assassination and what's bound to be going through that man's heart. What has he done? He woke up too late after he'd already done it. Look, he had the opportunity. He was born a free American. He was an American. But he wanted to sell his birthrights to become a Russian. And it backfired. He married a Russian girl. Now he's a free thinker of the Communistic Party of Cuba. Free thinking. I do my own thinking. You ain't got no thought coming. What will you do with Jesus called Christ? Amen. You ain't no free thinker. There's no free thinking. Let the mind that was in the Christ be in you. Amen. Let's pray. Think these thoughts. If there be any praise, if there be any virtue, think on this. In our midst this morning, and in this tape also I'm speaking. If you are here present this morning and you know that you're not right with God and you're not born of His Spirit, and God has, you say, well, I've made a confession. That ain't what I'm talking about. Has God accepted it? You can say, yes, I, I made a confession and so forth. Yes, I believe so did Pilate. I made a confession. Surely, what will I do with this just man? You can't wash him off your hands like that. No, no. What will you do with him? If you're not a born-again Christian with the Holy Spirit living in you and rich in your life, then why don't you take it now? You'll never wash this off your hands. 
You'll never hear the last of this message. It'll ring through until you bring the message into your heart that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. In this visible audience this morning, will there be those here who realize that they're, they're wrong and would raise up your hands? We have no room for an altar call. The place is so packed. But just say, pray for me, Brother Branham. God, help me. God bless you. I see your hand. It's, I want to now, right here, I want before God to Him know it. I'm guilty. And I realize I'm guilty. I, I want Him off my hands. I want Him in my heart. Raise your hand. Say, pray for me, Brother Branham. The Lord bless you. I see in this number of people here, maybe 40, 50 hands up here. Calling today. Amen. Calling today. Think of it now. That's Him calling. Jesus is calling. That's Him speaking to you. Have you sinned so far to your heart's so callous that you don't, can't even hear it no more? Once as a little boy or a little girl, you heard it. You had a desire to do it, but you put it off. And you just callous and callous those cuts and pulls. Is it so far gone that you can't hear it no more? Are you standing where, if you're at the place where like Oswald stands this morning, that you know, mm, how can you do it? Will there be another before we close and I'll offer prayer? Just anywhere in the building that never raised your hand. Say, Brother Branham, just since you said the last words, I, I feel it. Anybody outside in the corners, around the windows, anywhere, doesn't matter. Just God bless you, young lady. God bless you, sir. You got you. He's on. And God bless you, lady. Someone else. God bless you, lady. God bless you here. God bless you over there, little boy, little girl. Yes, the Lord bless you. Back there, sir. Yeah. Now, just to think of it. Now, I want you to do this. While we softly sing that Jesus is calling, I want you just to say, Lord, be merciful to me, a sinner. Or a pretender. I'm a church member, Lord, but I, I, I want you. I want you. Help me. I, I'll serve you. I promise it right now. I've raised my hand that I want you. Now you raise my heart that I receive you. And I will receive you into my heart. While we sing this uh, verse again, will you do it? Calling today, calling today. I pray your own way. Pray now. Jesus. Oh, that's him speaking. That's when you raise your hand. Early calling today. Jesus is calling. Oh. List to his voice. Hear him. Right now, hear him say, Lord, I'm guilty. Your blood's on my hands. I'm a sinner. I don't want it on there no more. I can't wash it off. I've tried it for years. I'm not going to turn you away like Pilate did and try to send you somebody else. I want you to come into my heart right now, Lord. I receive you. I see you standing right before me like an image standing there. By faith, I'm walking right into you, knowing that you forgive me. Now, I'm, you're going to be in my heart from this on. Today, everybody pray. Jesus is calling. He's tenderly calling today. Mm -hmm. Heavenly Father, the little message has ended, and now the decisions, the courts is set this morning. Angels are gathered into the room. The great Holy Spirit here giving vindications that Jesus still lives. He was a fountain of eternal life. The grave couldn't hold him, neither could hell keep him. He ascended up loose from hell, loose from the grave, and he stands among us today. And our creeds and denominations has bound many of our people, Lord. Sin has bound them, but today they want to be free. They stand like Pilate, and instead of trying to pass him on to somebody else, they've raised their hands. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. I'll not wash you away from me no more. I can't do it. You're still on my hands. I just wash and wash you. You wouldn't come off. But now I receive you. I want you in my life. 
and I receive you into my life. Lord, receive me into your kingdom by the pardoning of my sins and give me faith to believe that you receive me, Father. Amen. Grant it through Jesus Christ's name we pray. And now as you have our heads bowed, faith by faith, and God, you help me to be honest, but knowing that you promised that he that will come to me, I will in no wise turn him out. And I'll give him eternal life. And I'll raise him up at the last days. He that will confess me before man, him will I confess before my Father and the holy angels. He that heareth the real true interpretation of St. John 5.24 there is he that understandeth that receiveth my word. Amen. He that receiveth my word and believeth on him that sent me has everlasting life Hallelujah. and will not be called to the judgment. You won't come to the judgment bar like Oswald will, but you pass with a free pardon from death unto life. Thank you, Lord, I don't know how, I don't know why, but, but I believe it's happened. I believe it in my heart. My unbelief is gone. I can freely say amen to every word that you say. Amen. And I accept it right now. Amen. I believe it. Now with your heads bowed, you that believe that, that raised your hands a few moments ago, and by faith you see the image of Christ standing there, which you should be in. You're walking now by faith. Believe that your sins are pardoned. And from this day on, you're ready for Christian baptism. And you're ready now to walk in Christ. Would you... As a testimony to him, raise your hands back. Say, by faith, I believe it with all my heart. God bless you. That's fine. I now accept it. I, I accept. Nothing I can do. God bless you. Look like everyone that I've seen. I now accept. See, you're no good. You never was no good. You can't be no good. But Jesus died for no good people. What I have to do, Brother Brent, just accept what he did. Amen. Just accept what he did for you. And now, by believing it and accepting it, now, I believe the pasture, the pool will be open. Yes. Baptism will be in order. If you want to be baptized, if you have took the titles, Father, Son, Holy Ghost, you're truly, I say this with reverence and respect, but to my way of seeing it, you are not baptized. Right. You're not. For you haven't carried out what he said. He said, baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. If you just had those titles called over you, he never said, go call these titles. Go call these names. It never was done in the Bible. It never was done that way. It was baptized the way Jesus said, in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, which is Jesus Christ. Amen. Peter, with the key, said the same thing, every other apostle, the whole church until the early Nicaea Council when Roman Catholic Church organized, accepted titles instead of names. You're either baptized into the Roman dogmas of denomination or baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. One or the other. It's on your hands. You can't wash it off. It's there. You've accepted it now. I'll ask you, as an as a organist and a pianist, turn to the famous old hymn, My faith looks up to thee, thou Lamb of Calvary, Savior divine. Now hear me while I pray and take all my guilt away. And let me from this day be holy thine. Don't no one leave the building. Just reverently stand now. And let's just raise our hands to him. My faith look up And he is the word. Thine. I now surrender my life. 
The water will be ready in a few minutes. If you can't take the baptism now, we'll baptize again tonight. Think of it all afternoon on your hands. Get it off. The only way you can do is washed in the blood of Jesus Christ. Okay? Yes, sir. Remember it now as we bow our heads and look to him now. While life's dark made the decisions in your heart now. He's on trial. The Word is ready for crucifixion. Christ is on trial. What will you do with Jesus called Christ? Me. is the last one that goes on the book. We're at the end time. I think real s deeply. Are you? Is there anyone here who's turned him away? Remember, it may never come again. Pilate didn't have no other chance. He tried his best to get saved and he couldn't do it. It was on his hands. And what will you do with the anointed word for this day called the Christ? 